Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this second of our co-chairs press conferences for the annual meeting of new champions. My name is Adrian Monk from the World Economic Forum. I'm very pleased to be joined by three of our co-chairs, Mitchell Baker, Executive Chairwoman of the Mozilla Foundation from the USA, and also on our Global Agenda Council on Data-Driven Development. Nathan Blechazic, co-founder and chief technology officer of Airbnb, also a technology pioneer of the forum. And Jeffrey Tarr, president and chief executive officer of Digital Globe, who's also on our Global Agenda Council on Space. So we really are making very good use of our co-chairs, as you can see, in other forum activities. I'm going to ask them to share a little bit of their hopes and their expectations of this meeting with all of you, and then we'll have some time for questions afterwards. And I'm just going to start with Mitchell and uh, ask how the internet has uh, matched up to its expectations for the growth and productivity increases that we're all after in the global economy. Well, so far, you know, the internet has exceeded any possible set of expectations. You know, it's easy to forget the internet is 20 years old, really uh, 20 years ago in August when it really came to the consumer scene. And so far, it's changed much to all aspects of life for those of us who are connected. So I think it's pretty impossible to uh, imagine what could have happened 20 years ago with the internet. So the real question, though, is going forward. What kind of potential does the internet have to continue to bring the kinds of changes and growth and innovation that we've seen today? You know, and the answer is the potential is there. The power of being connected, of having our economies connected, our technology connected, our social networks connected are immense. And the internet offers all of those things. There are a host of ways in which growth of the same scope and scale is possible. Some of that will perhaps just happen, and some of that requires focus. So the potential is huge. We need to do a few things. One is actually commit to interconnectedness. Over the last 20 years, we've seen the interconnectedness of economies and people grow, and that's important to continue. So that's an interconnectedness and an openness that allows for global markets, allows for a global exchange of ideas, and allows science, technology, and innovation to reach its full potential. We actually need to commit to innovation. It sounds easy. It's actually much harder to do. Um, and so to really focus on the aspects that bring new possibilities, and to work hard at it. We also should commit to a global internet. In our world of interconnectedness, the internet is one of the great tools for moving things forward. We need a global internet and not a series of local, fragmented, smaller networks. And that possibility of continued great growth into whole new areas is enormous. There's still billions of people not yet connected that's a huge potential for growth. For those of us living in already connected worlds, whole new possibilities are open. There is the digital transformation of industry, which has only just begun. And there is the increasing mixture of data and information to benefit not just industries, but consumers. And so my hope for the forum is that we address a new course for growth that is global, sustainable, equitable, and personal. Growth needs to be global or we increase instabilities. Sustainable is necessary for economies and for our planet. Equitable growth is important for stability as well as individual human beings. And personal growth is looking at growth both through increased GDP, but also the possibility of every individual to increase their place in the value chain and to pursue the activities that are important to them. And I expect this annual meeting to be very productive in charting this new course for growth. The meeting has a, a unique collection of people, breadth and depth, and is also a proponent of the multi-stakeholder view of life, which is incredibly important, particularly to the internet, and to continuing to grow the possibilities of interconnectedness. I'm honored to be a co-chair and looking forward to the events that come. Thank you.
Mitchell, thank you very much. Um, you talked about multi-stakeholder collaboration as being part of this meeting. Uh, we have 1,700 participants from some 90 different countries. Uh, Jeffrey, can I turn to you and ask you how collaboration between some of those participants can move us towards concrete action on some of the development issues we're faced with? Certainly. Uh, we live in a world where the challenges we face today are far too complex for any one organization or nation to solve alone. World Economic Forum and this very important event is bringing together innovative leaders from across government, industry, academia, and global development organizations. And by doing so, it enables new connections, and with those connections, new solutions. Uh, I can speak from experience having attended events in the past uh, that connections made and fostered by the World Economic Forum have enabled us to make contributions to some of the world's greatest challenges. For example, uh, last uh, two years ago at Davos, I met with Andrew Steer, the CEO of World Resources Institute. That led to a collaboration which has helped us contribute to the mitigation of the environmental impact of forest fires in Indonesia and fires started by, uh, as a result of land conflict and clearing lands for uh, palm oil. A meeting with Chris Elia, Elias uh, of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with Bill Gates himself last year led to a partnership which has enabled us to make a contribution to their extraordinary efforts to eliminate, eradicate polio uh, where it exists in the world. My hope for the next few days is that we will, I'll be able to make new connections that will help us contribute, but also as co-chair, more importantly, to help others do the same, to make those kind of connections that enable those here and the World Economic Forum to contribute to some of the most pressing global challenges of our time, and also to contribute to economic growth that comes from collaboration. Jeffrey, thanks very much. One of the uh, voices we heard from, from China this morning was Chung Wei of the Didi Kwadi, um, one of the companies that's almost synonymous with the sharing economy is Airbnb. Um, if I can turn to Nathan Blachazek and ask you, Nathan, how is the sharing economy going to deliver on the promise and the expectation? Is it, uh, are we placing too much hope on, on what it can do for us in transformation terms? Well, this is my third year at the, the annual meeting of New Champions. And my first year here, I must say that the sharing economy was an obscure term. Airbnb was an obscure term. Most people here hadn't heard of it. It wasn't on their radar. And I think really over the last two years, it's become a really f a big part of the, the agenda and conversation here. Um, and everyone I've met uh, has, has used Airbnb. Uh, and I think it really speaks to how far we've come and, and to the fact that this idea has scale, uh, incredibly so. And, and in that sense, I think it has met the expectations uh, that were originally laid out. But of course, the real question is, how big and how mainstream can the sharing economy become? Um, you know, in the Airbnb case, 50 million guests have used Airbnb today, 17 million alone this summer. Uh, so incredible trajectory, but where will it all end? And I think my hope uh, for the conference this year is to uh, have a conversation uh, across industry and with different uh, heads of state and figure out how do we connect this new and clearly very powerful concept to traditional business and, and traditional governance uh, to, uh, to really realize the full potential of the sharing economy. Uh, and further mainstream uh, this activity. Thanks to all of our co-chairs. Can I just get a sense in the room of questions? I know all of them have full schedules and uh, appointments. Lady at the front, and can we get a microphone to you? I think we might need to pop our headphones on, non-Chinese speakers amongst us. And uh, if you give us a moment to do that, that would be fantastic. It's on channel one for the English translation. Okay, Man. maybe I can ask in ah, English. Fantastic, sorry. I was <laughs> remembering your question this morning. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question for uh, Blackie. And my question is that what's your opinion on 
um, of the relationship between innovation and uh, sorry between innovation and uh, regulatory and uh, what experience do you learn from the American and uh, the uh, European markets about this and how can it be used in China? Thank you. Well, I think initially it was important to prove the model uh, before there was really a willingness for, for regulators to have a conversation. Um, now that it's clear that this, this model has the potential to scale and impact many people, uh, we are trying to uh, engage in conversation as proactively as possible. And we've seen a lot of progress. Um, there's been about 12 different countries and cities in the last 18 months uh, that have engaged in conversation, deep discussion, and passed new policies, balanced policies for the 21st century um, that strike the, the right balance between growth but also uh, making sure that our guardrails are in, in, in place. Uh, and I think this is something that we expect and hope to play out in Asia too. Uh, I think this is a concept that was born in the US and Europe, but now most of the, the, the fastest growing countries in the world are in Asia. China is our fastest growing from a consumer demand perspective. Uh, and so I think hopefully it will not be too much longer uh, until we can have uh, and see substantive change from a policy perspective in, in Asia. Thank you. Can I, lady uh, at the back? Hi. Um, the question that I have that dovetails. Can you just tell um, us your name? I'm Sylvia with Burrito Satu in Indonesia. Thanks. So the question I have that dovetails the answer that you just gave is: um, is Indo well, Indonesia is the second largest market for Facebook and Twitter. So we're just wondering what plans does Airbnb has for Indonesian market, and whether in general is Indonesia on your radar? Okay. And can I also just get a sense of if we have other questions? for the panel because I want to make sure I bring in our other two co-chairs. So we have questions more broadly, lady there and lady there. M my quick response will be that uh, Bali is certainly a very popular destination and, and one where we've, we've had some activities meeting with our community. Uh, all of Asia is growing very quickly, um, but we have to prioritize. Our focus has really been uh, on, on uh, China and Japan uh, and, and soon to be India. Thanks. Lady there. Thank you. Uh, I'm the journalist from CBN News, and uh, I got a question for Nathan. And you mentioned that you have 50 million uh, customers now, and I want to uh, know how many customers are from China, and what's your next plan to open up China market? I don't have the specific breakout from China, but what I can say is China is the fastest growing outbound market. It's grown 700% in terms of travelers coming from China going elsewhere in the world using Airbnb. And so we see huge potential here, uh, obviously. So one question for, uh, for our other coaches picking up off that is, is what, to what extent is China going to become uh, a place where lessons are imported to one where lessons are exported, where we're seeing China as somewhere where we have to uh, uh, not just bring uh, practices in, but export practices from. Jeffrey? Well, we see China as playing both roles, uh, and the way that we participate in the market in China is primarily through a joint venture uh, with a Chinese entity, uh, China Seaway, uh, which is part of CASC. Mitchell? Well, there's no question that China is and will be an even bigger source of innovation and, and new ideas going forward. I think the degree to which those export well depends a little bit on the nature of the Chinese market and the structure. If it's a very highly localized market and if it's a market that's protected from global competition, then I think the export of Chinese innovations will be much more difficult because they will be um, very locally grown, and that's, of course, difficult to market. So I think the extent to which the Chinese uh, uh, e economy is open and, and participates in a give and take with the global economy will increase the opportunity for Chinese companies to become truly global. Lady there with the microphone. I will ask in Chinese. OK. <laughs> The theme uh, of this annual meeting is technology and growth, but innovation 
is more than just technology. It also comprises many other th environmental, you know, uh, talents issues. So uh, this question could be small, could be big. So what do you think is the real driver for economic growth? It's just science, technology, or something else? So what is the real driver uh, for economic growth? Second question for your institution in which you are working for. What is the fundamental driver for your long-term sustainable growth? One of the sub-themes for this meeting is being human. Uh, so human capital, I think, is a big part of what the forum sees in addition to technology and innovation as being crucial to, uh, to the future of, of economic growth. Um, but if I can turn perhaps uh, first to you, Mitchell, and just ask on those two points, um, what do you see as one of the fu as the fundamental driver uh, of economic growth, and also what's important to to your foundation uh, in terms of long term? I say there's a few different drivers of economic growth. A few fundamental ones. You can start with a, you know, a, a healthy population, for example, or, you know, or resources. But I'll focus more on the innovation technology question. The key piece, the key driver for us at, at Mozilla is the strength of our networks. That, that means the underlying physical network, but it also means the social network of people. So not just human capital, but the connections between people and what they're doing. And also the innovation networks, where do ideas come from? And it's that combination for, for us because we're a completely internet company. There's, there's nothing, <laughs> we do nothing really. We grow communities, but, but we're completely about the network. It is actually the strength of the networks that sit on top of that, including real connections between people and unexpected connections, which is where in innovation comes from. So. Nathan. Yeah, I, I would say there's a, a few components uh, to economic growth. I, I think you know, it's going to start with a powerful idea, uh, but then uh, the question is, how can you scale that idea? And then ultimately, what is the, the impact of that scale? Um, with regards to scale, I, I would say ideas that can engage a broad set of the community are, are the most powerful and I think maybe most important for driving global growth uh, and making sure that everyone gets to participate in that growth. And I think in the Airbnb case, uh, you know, this is one of the few economic opportunities that are really open to um, all of the middle class at the very least, uh, which is to say if you have a home and a little bit of hospitality, you can participate in this community and derive a second income. And then in thinking about impact, for, for our company, uh, you know, we are very mission oriented. Uh, we think about our long-term impact on the world, not as an ROI calculation, um, but to what extent have we achieved our North Star of helping uh, people to belong anywhere, which means when someone is traveling outside of their element, can we connect them and make them feel at home, comfortable, um, even while discovering something new? That is our, our mission, and I think it's really important that companies uh, have a strong uh, mission and that they articulate that uh, mission uh, to their community uh, and not just have a narrow mercenary focus. Jeffrey, if I can turn uh, to you. Uh, I would say when it comes down to economic growth, uh, the solution or the, the, the fuel is innovation, it's open markets, and it's geopolitical factors. Uh, when I look inside my own company, it comes down to talent and that talent creates new innovative product offerings that meet real customer needs uh, and maintaining a leading edge in technology. And that is only possible by collaborating with others. Just probably have time for one more question. If I can just look around the room and see if we have uh, one more question to, for the panel. Uh, or else I'm going to release them into the wild and send them back into the Congress Center to their next sessions. So I hope you'll join me in thanking them and look forward to seeing all of you back for the next press conference at quarter past two. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks to our co-chairs.